Hello everyone, uh, I'll go over one more uh, Bobby Fischer's game from the 63-64 US Championship, of course the most famous one, where he scored 11 out of 11, and after which a special prize was introduced for anybody who manages to repeat uh, such a score, and I don't know how much money one would get if, if they have a perfect score on the US Championship, but there's the so-called Bobby Fischer prize ever since, ever since then, I believe. And uh, I showed you one game played against Robert Byrne, uh, the one of his most famous most famous games ever, and I think this one against Paul Benko could measure up to that one uh, definitely. And it was a short miniature in which Bobby Fischer played an amazingly aggressive Austrian attack, and he he introduced some ideas uh, against the Pirtz defense or the modern, uh, which uh, will be played years after. And I think the Austrian attack, uh, which Bobby Fischer uh, basically he didn't invent it, but he perfected it, is what's the most uh, most aggressive and the most attacking way for White to play against the modern defense, the, the, the Pirtz and the Robach. So, uh, he was playing Paul Benko, of course, a very strong Grandmaster, but nowhere near uh, Bobby's strength. e4, uh, g6 by Paul Benko, d4, bishop g7, so this is now the modern or the Robach. After knight c3, d6, uh, the Pirtz defense, I think it has transposed. And now f4, f4 is the Austrian attack. And usually, uh, the, the traditional way to fight those kind of defenses with d6 and g6 is to play knight to f3, bishop to e2, bishop to, to, e, uh, to e3, and to have a solid setup, castle, kingside. But f4 is introducing uh, a, very, uh, a very big challenge for black to face, and this is basically uh, taking all the space that black has given up in the opening. And this is, I would say, the most challenging way for black to face uh, white in this position. Now knight to f6 is placed, this is the most common move, knight to f3, castles, bishop to d3, and here Paul Benko makes his first mistake. Uh, the best move here is knight to c6, and after castles, bishop to g4. And here after bishop to g4, white doesn't play h3, weakening his king side further on, he plays e5, and after d5, d5, the position is supposed to be equal. However, after bishop to d3, uh, Paul Benko didn't play knight to c6, uh, he played uh, bishop to g4 immediately, and now h3 actually does work, and since the white king hasn't castled yet, any further uh, weakening of the king side wouldn't really matter that much, because white can always play bishop to e3, queen to d2, and castle queen side in this position. So this is basically just a tempo gain. The best move is for black to return the bishop back to c8. Uh, bringing the bishop to d2 would block the queen and perhaps the knight, since the knight might want to control these two squares. So the bishop has basically given white a free tempo and to justify that, Paul Benko takes uh, takes the knight with bishop f3 and now queen to f3 and this just makes uh, white's attacking setup perfect and each and every one of these pawn advances is menacing, and uh, Black will basically have to calculate each one of them on every consecutive move, which is impossible for a human to do perfectly, and that's exactly why the game lasted only 20 moves, and Bobby Fischer had a simple, clear plan of attack, and he had a, an easy game to play, every move was logical, and Paul Benko could only go wrong on each move. And uh, you can see the engine evaluation on the right side of the board. Uh, this means that white is already about plus 0 0.7. However, that's not the point from a human perspective. Even though, uh, even if the engines would uh, say this is equal, uh, which happens in a lot of positions, uh, white is simply practically better. Now knight to c6 is played, one move too late. Bishop e3, uh, e5. And here, uh, white has to decide what to do, and uh, you have to d uh, decide whether you want to block the center down, whether you want to open it up, whether you want to open the d-file or the f-file, and whether you are castling king side or queen side. And Bobby Fischer finds a mix uh, of all of these ideas and uh, creates a perfect attacking setup. First, first he takes with d takes e5, and after d takes e5, he plays f5. And basically, in these types of uh, central uh, tension positions, the rule is the common rule is if you take with one pawn you push the other after the capture so this is what bobby fisher did d5 d5 and now f5 playing fe would be too weakening and it would give black a perfect knight on on e5 and here 
The best move uh, for black was knight to d4, which is a perfectly logical move, gaining a tempo on the queen, forcing the queen to f2, and now black would have to see counterplay with either c5 or b5. I think b5 is the is the best move, even though it's a pawn sacrifice, but it's giving black a lot of attacking chances. The best move for white here would be g4, just counterattacking. So this would give black, this would give Paul Benko a worse position, but a fighting one in which uh, he could have had some practical chances. And of course, Bobby Fischer was human too, and he he lost a couple of games in in these types of positions but after f5 Paul Benko played g takes f5 and uh, even if you're playing somebody weaker than you playing g takes f is absurd because you are opening up the roads to your king and you are weakening your king side uh, too much and this is just an insurmountable advantage for for white and this position position is just lost of course queen takes f5 uh, now knight to d4 is played, but it doesn't work now, because now after queen to f2, white still has the open g-file to work with, or the semi-open g-file towards the black king. Knight to e8, uh, preparing f5, or preparing to get the queen into the, into the position with queen to f6, perhaps. But now bobby castles, and this just doesn't work if queen to f6, if queen f6, then queen g3, and uh, he has lost another tempo. Now knight to d6, uh, queen to g3. King to h8, getting away from the stair of the queen, because Bobby was now threatening bishop h6, at least exchanging the defender. Queen to g4, and now, move by move, by move Bobby is preparing to uh, get the, the queen to the optimal square. c6, queen to h5. Three consecutive queen moves from f2 to g3 to g4 to h5. Four consecutive queen moves. And the queen is now perfect here. And this is... Uh, Already after after queen to g3, Bobby has already calculated the winning combination. I'm sure of it because uh, otherwise queen g4, queen h5 wouldn't make any sense. Okay, so now uh, after queen to h5, uh, you can see why the queen went to h5. Uh, this bishop is the point of the combination, and if he can manage to get rid of this pawn. Uh, then the position is just winning and there's no way for black to to defend h7. Now watch watch how he did that Here uh, the best move uh, for For black is knight to e6 and this move would give him some defending chances perhaps trading off this bishop perhaps Trying to centralize the knight perhaps trying to get more pieces into the defense uh, Secondly uh, one thing that black can never do is get the queen of this diagonal and you will see why immediately uh, queen to e8 was played by Paul Benko, this, and this is just immediately losing. And the point is the f6 square. And I'm sure Bobby Fischer knew about that idea and that he calculated this uh, before he played queen to g3. Now there's a simple winning combination which works. And that's bishop takes d4. And this bishop can't be taken. Uh, you will see why, because Paul Benko took the bishop and lost immediately. He actually resigned two moves from now. And the best move would be b6. And bishop f2, just getting a piece, uh, just getting a whole piece. The point is that if bishop takes d4, if the bishop is taken with e takes d4, this pawn is now free to move. And that's the point. And then that opens up the bishop. However, if after e takes d4, you play e5 immediately, then f5 blocks the position down and is completely winning. But after bishop d4, e takes d4, Bobby Fischer found the crushing rook to f6 and after rook to f6 whatever black does the position is losing and you can of course take the knight you can take the rook both are free but both allow the move e5 and whatever black does after e5 that's losing that's checkmate and after uh, rook to f6 of course if uh, the, the rook is taken uh, then e5 wins immediately it's made in three moves whatever black does there's no way to prevent checkmate so the rook wasn't taken, of course. Paul Benko tried king to g8, and this is uh, slightly better, but not really, because e5 once again, h6, the only uh, winning, the only winning idea, and now knight to e2. And after knight to e2, Paul Benko resigned. Uh, of course, this is just a piece up, and you can't defend it. If you uh, take the rook, then e takes f, and that checkmate in a couple of moves after queen to g4 check and queen g7 checkmate. If you don't take the rook, your piece down. Whatever you do, you are losing. And I think this game is uh, one of Bobby Fischer's most obvious instructive attacking games in which he 
showed his plan early on, of course, uh, us mere mortals can't see that, Paul Benko couldn't see it either, but I think that such uh, attacking ideas, which uh, are created after the move queen to g3, uh, could be used as a great text textbook in attacking chess. And after queen to g3, uh, who would guess that the plan was to sacrifice the rook on f6 and play e5, and that the only thing in the way of that plan was the queen on this diagonal. So as soon as the queen moves, this works. And I think that's a brilliant conception. And of course, if you play e4, you are going to face the Pirates and the Modern, and these ideas could actually be played in your own games. So I think this is uh, a very important pattern to, to learn and to remember. Uh, okay, everybody, thanks very much for watching. I hope you liked the, this attacking masterpiece by Bobby Fischer, and stay tuned for more chess. Thanks very much. Bye.